Hi, and welcome to part three of our in-depth report from the Scale Model Podcast. It's Anthony here with you, and Stuart's joining me tonight. Hello, kids. And uh, we are building a resin transformable model kit. It is a 1100 uh, Y. VF19A Excalibur Valkyrie and uh, this evening we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of the uh, progress with the project and we're going to be I'm going to discuss cleaning up some of the parts, mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk a little bit more about some resin building technique, some uh, some more basics, and a little bit more advanced stuff. This I have to admit, I'm looking forward to this part, as because uh, I've never done resin, but I know uh, clean up sometimes you have some issues, so it's yeah. an important skill for people to know. Yeah. So, and I'm just treating this like uh, maybe people have a a resin kit in their stash that they haven't attempted yet. Um, and for people who are experienced, then, uh, you know, maybe it's just a little it's refresher. A good, good refresher yeah. never hurts. <laughs> so, okay. And this kit will be quite interesting, too, for no matter, I think, what oh, level you're at. It's a gorgeous kit yeah. you've already seen. Yeah, and it's kind of an oddity to have a transformable model <laughs> kit. So it's, it's you know. I know. So, I continue to be blown away by that. Yeah, it, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to show um, some, of the, some of the work that I've done so far. So these would be the sort of shoulder pockets pods right. and um, actually this is kind of turning into a bit of a restoration project so the the kit was sent to me um, sort of semi-completed or assembled so somebody had glued it together using sort of the super glue which is a standard uh, type of glue mm -hmm. and so what I've been doing is basically very gently prying apart the pieces so I can clean them up mm -hmm. and reshape them a little bit and right. then reassemble them kind of more to my liking. So this one I've I've actually taken apart, cleaned up and then reassembled and this one has yet to be done. I can so, even see a little bit of a difference, yeah. Yeah, I can see sort of a gap there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to show also uh, in terms of the parts, if you'll notice, um, you know, right along here, there's you can see a bit of inconsistency with the the surface, mm -hmm. and you know that's been sanded, uh, flush and flat, and it just it's a little bit nicer and smoother. And we're also going to take some some more detailed still photos of some yes. of these, and we'll have that yeah. up when we post this one out. Yeah, at one to one hundred, it's it's a very small bird, it is. so yes, um, it'll be nice to have some good shots to to check out. So um, basically. My primary tool has been using the sanding blocks mm -hmm. to to get this um, to get this all flush and and um, and clean and lined up. So what I've done here is I've glued it together with super glue, mm -hmm. and then I you know went. Um, I've been using my 180, 220, and 320 a lot, and then once it's together, I was just able to sort of you know right clean up each edge plane them together and all these little details kind of add up i'll show you that there mm -hmm. so you can kind of see that they sort of stick out yeah a little bit and they're just not you know they're not fitting together right. quite right. right and even even when they're lined up nicely they still have weird edges mm -hmm. so once you clean them up you get a nicer pleasing shape so um I suppose the point is when you're working with resin, uh, you have to do the small cleanup um, of each part, and and to to really oops, really ensure a good fit. And I think mm -hmm. those little details all add up at the end to make a pleasing finished part. And that's that's really the difference between a big difference between resin and injected molded. Where yeah. injected molded parts usually are a lot cleaner. Yes. Generally. So yeah, when when someone builds probably the average polystyrene kit, it is smooth. The parts are crisp and clean mm -hmm. for the most part. Okay. And I think when you look at a resin kit, there is a step of work there that you don't ha, ha, normally have with those kind of right. kits. But if if you take that time, and um, it's just you know it's just very uh, it's just working away a little bit at a time, you're gonna get a, a much nicer. Um, look to your finished right. model. Now, can I ask, what did you use? Did you have to use anything to pry it apart or just very gentle blade? Oh my goodness, I just used my trusty number 14. Just your number 14, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Blade. So I've been using my these flexi -pi, flexi file flex pads I love. I've been using those quite They're a bit. Great. Yeah, I have a set of those. For certain, for certain things and the Super Saiyan blocks a ton just 
to um, even out the services and to get going. Yeah, here's your, here, 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 and here's the bleeding product shop. Yeah, <laughs> this set. But no, we, we you can own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We actually, no, for they've this come sort in, of thing, they're very. Yeah, yeah, they've come in really handy. Yeah. So here's another um, another good example. So these are the arms. Right. Um, this one has been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And the one on my left has not been, I haven't touched it yet. Okay. So you can see that there are certain waves of just material mm -hmm. where it sort of was a bit malformed. Yeah. And that's, that's not a big deal. That's actually a really perfect, um, you know, where I come in and I'll do it, I'll do it right now. So I'm saving it. So that little, I'm going to bump up to my 220. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this part out. And if you'll notice there, I'll hold it really still, even that edge is a little bit, right. there's some flash yeah. and yeah. some... Just a bit. Yeah, just a little bit, but it's just not a flat surface, mm -hmm. right? Where if it's a machined part on a vehicle, it would, you know... And this be, is more nice about using a, a sanding block for like a flat surface. Yeah, I wouldn't, that's not the job yeah. for my sanding sticks, no, but... The block does a nice job. Yeah, so to get rid of that, see now it's nice, I can really feel what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I can see it sort of flattening out there. And um, part of part of the, the process of, you know, I don't know exactly what happened in 1997 with this kit, but part of the process of um, pouring resin and casting it is it's put into a rubber mold, and then the rubber molds are usually sandwiched between something um, solid, like blocks of wood or something right. like th of that nature. So what happens is sometimes if there's a bit too much pressure, it can distort the rubber and then you get like a you know a concave or a convex right. or some kind of curved in your flat right. surface now we should also talk about since you're sanding here uh just a quick health and safety one. sure um resin material i understand is is a bit more toxic and you normally when you're doing a lot of major sanding you want to wear yeah a respirator for this demo tonight it'd be kind of hard to hear anthony yes and we're just doing a little bit yeah but generally speaking when you're working with resin parts you want that sure. respirator. It never hurts to take those extra precautions. Now, I, I should mention that um, even for the work I've been doing, I haven't been too, too worried about mm -hmm. Um, not a lot inhaling the dust. Yeah. yeah. Um, and another thing that you can do to help minimize dust is to wet sand. Yes. So that keeps the dust from flying off the part. Mm -hmm. So I usually use a little dish like that. That mm -hmm. actually has a little bit of water in it. Yeah, because your sanding blocks, yeah. almost all of them work, work yes. wet or dry. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's your wet sanding right there. You're, yeah. you're ready to go. And I, I did quite a bit of uh, wet sanding. Yeah. Um, I just but, wanted to make sure we yeah, cover off the... Uh, absolutely. Stuff. Now, I should... We should uh, also mention that it's... I think there's a bit more risk from the glue uh, in, in mm -hmm. um, inhaling the vapors from yeah. the... Insta set kicker or from the mm -hmm. super glues, they that's probably something and worth that's, noting. That's something we always talk about, like yeah. when you can work in a well ventilated space. I know when I when I use uh, I, I usually have a fan going across my workbench anyway. Yep. Unless I'm painting, but if I am using what I call the more stronger solvents in that, oh, I'll, big quite, time. I'll quite often have the spray booth going. Yeah. And that's I might a good do idea. There, especially if it's a large part, yeah. like, like an aircraft wing or something, just oh, to help sure. get that out a little bit. More. And I, I do have a um, a fume hood right here, yeah, or a paint booth. Right I, in front of you there. I use it. I yeah. use it all the time. Again, just for the purposes of this video, we're being, yeah. we're, we're we're being just a little bit bad. I don't think Anthony's going to going to grow. Yeah. But really, I'm not concerned about, like, if I was, let's say I was working in a shop that does resin yeah. uh, and there's a ton of dust or yeah. something like it's, that, I'd like be concerned. Else. It's like anything else. Yeah. Just take the appropriate precautions. Yeah. It's like why we say, if you're going to airbrush, you know, have a, have a few hood. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, stuff, I think stuff really like when you get down to the painting process, which would be the same for uh, resin or polystyrene, yeah. and even the glues, if the, and people will probably say that it does irritate. Oh, yeah. Them. Well, and, um, and we've talked, and we've talked yeah. about before with paints on our podcast about mm -hmm. whether it's enamel or acrylic. You know, yeah, even the ones oil based and ones quote unquote water based, it's still important. Yeah, you know, you because you're that, you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. Yeah, no matter what the material is, you're vaporizing it, and then you can breathe it in, and it sits in your lungs, and who knows what it yeah, does? You can't nothing good. Lungs, nothing good. <laughs> nothing. So good. there you can see, I yeah. pretty easily flatten that section out there. That, right, that and then we'll take another still gone. picture showing before yeah. and after. And then, as I was looking around, um, 
at the parts. Mm -hmm. Even here you can still see certain edges are just, they have a little bit, you know, they're, they have a little bit of uh, flash or sort right. of inconsistencies. And um, here's another good example, right? So there's a couple panel lines running across, but the, there's, I don't know, this, some kind of wrinkle Okay. And then there's something there. Mm -hmm. And when you and then here's a here's a really good example. Yeah. I saw that one earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So this would have been where the part I believe was cut off, maybe a sprue or something like okay. that. And you can see there's a little like an overhang and mm -hmm. some kind of rough stuff mm -hmm. like from the the you know the cutting process or using nippers. The sanding blocks make short work of that, and that's what I did there. And you can see right. it looks a lot better. And we'll take a picture of that. As yeah, well, trying to absolutely. Trying to one, one before and the one yeah. after. Yeah, and I also even got right into this these angled sections here. So I've cleaned that edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to clean this one. I'm going to yep. clean that one. Yeah, and it just. All the little details that you put into it help make it look more complete and more finished uh, when you're done your model. Oh, so yeah, and it yeah. Helps the fit. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. The look and the fit, right? And yeah, what else exactly. is there to build models? <laughs> <laughs> so there's some examples. So I haven't I haven't done any painting. I haven't right. even washed this. Nope. I'm gonna I'm going to wash it um, before I prime it because I'm t I'm handling the pieces. There's my so there's a good question because yeah. there always seems to be a great debate in the injection molded world too about you should wash your sprues uh, i agree a lot of people say no you don't need to for injected but you do for resin and vacuum form and so what do you do do you do it for all of it yeah absolutely because okay. it um it's a quick step mm -hmm. in my opinion and uh i think that no matter what the molding process is i i think that we're to my knowledge, I think there's always some kind of mold release. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Or oils from your hands. Or yeah, there's whatever. definitely there's definitely oils from your hands, right, mm -hmm. as you're touching it. And then um, grease, and that will interfere with how the paint, you know, operates yeah. and well, takes. And when you use your finger to stir your coffee and then start dandling the Yeah, or just to spill the coffee, which is, uh, that happens, that happens yeah. all the time. That happens all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, and I just use a bit of dish soap, mm -hmm. and I have, like, an old, like, plastic tub that I, I just... Put it in there. A little bit of water, a little bit of dish soap. Yeah, I've heard of people using toothbrush. all sorts of everything from dish soap to with a touch of alcohol or, oh, a, yeah. you know, like, water, yeah. soap, and a touch of alcohol because I know people use that for like a wash thing too which helps the fluidity it doesn't yeah it breaks you know, the surface breaks the surface. That's it. yeah so there's all sorts of things now I, I I confess I never have on my injected molded yeah stuff um, I, and I think it's one of those things yeah. that maybe it works out until it maybe doesn't it works until it doesn't or maybe yeah. it could have been better I don't know but it's definitely something that if I did get it injected and I've got I've got like a you know what I do have one tiny injected molding or um, not a res resin yeah resin thank casket. you resin yeah it's a little bomb card I think it's from World War II okay. Germany a little 48 scale yeah but if I was to build that yeah that I would definitely because I've heard you need to do that. Actually, no, I do have another one. I bought a 172nd scale, I think it was from Sun something. It was a 172nd scale Viper. Oh, Black Sun. Black Sun. Black yep. Sun, yeah. Yep. And I did, wa I did wash that one. Yeah, I, th I think it's one of those steps that it's easy. It doesn't really cost you anything right. money or time wise. Right, exactly. And if it if it gives you any advantage, then mm -hmm. it's worth it, right? And exactly. if it doesn't give you any advantage, then you haven't lost anything. You haven't lost anything, no. And so I've started doing my, I've actually started doing all my styrene kits too, because why right. not? Why nice not? and clean. Yeah. Exactly. And then, uh, yeah. Very but good. we're going to do another video and get right into that too. Yeah, we're going to exactly. talk about it in more more we detail. Are. We are. So back to our, uh, back to another project for clear, or our, today's project for cleaning up. So the gun pod. The, so I actually took, um, I took some sandpaper, uh, fairly high grit. Oh yeah. It it the it the resin came out with a little bit of texture. Mm -hmm, I see and that in the camera here. Yeah. You can see that. Okay. So I've actually and I've actually cleaned this down a bit more. Um, yeah. Let me show you. I think you can kind of see around around here. It had a little like almost like a stippled yeah, surface. Yeah, like a non like a non skin surface. Yeah. Yeah. But really, this should be smooth, right? right. Like okay. uh, for the sake of our subject matter. So um, you know, I just tried to really kind of even out the surface, mm -hmm. and uh, there was some. So back here, there was a sort of a chunk, very similar to the arm, where right. where like it was stuck on a sprue mm -hmm. and, and trimmed off, and. Um, 
I also cleaned up or drilled out the barrel, just like you would do for any yeah. kind of military yeah, subject. Yeah. Drilled the barrel, and uh, I wanted to point out right here. So these are some Oops. some bubbles, yes. some pinholes. Okay. Yeah, I can barely see. They'll probably show up in the yeah. video, but again, we'll, we'll take some pictures. We'll definitely take some pics. And so this is like, like you can't keep sanding down, right? They're pits, right? right. Little tiny pits. Right. So I was going to show a technique and uh, to fill those right now. And I don't think there's any problem using your favorite putty, mm -hmm. like Tamiya putty, I think would work out fine. Or mm -hmm. people who use um, Mr. Surfacer. This is, this is how live we are. We are going to take a picture of this yeah. before. Here, I'll point. Oh yeah, yeah, just point it out. Oh yeah, I can just make that. Hang on a sec. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, um, and how I'm going to fix that is uh -huh. uh, this is the bottom of uh, like an OJ container. I love these things. Bottom of an OJ container. Yeah. I hope you drank the orange juice. It's good. For of course. Yeah. yeah. I like um, for my my tool is going to be a toothpick. Right. And I often sharpen these. I know there, there are a lot of really cool tools, yeah. like CA specific applicators. Mm -hmm. uh, FlexiFile makes a really cool mm -hmm. one. I think it's mm -hmm. called the Candle. I think so. CA yes. Candle. Yeah. I've, I've had similar ones over the years. I have a yeah. larger metal one. But yeah, but you find a sharpened toothpick. So I'm going to just give this a quick. Uh, All right. It's a nice little tip. There are a night. There are lots of tools out there. So I just, it's got a bit of a blunt edge. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that I have bought, and I just made it into a sharper edge. All right. So what I'm going to use is this is um, your Maxi Cure from PM Hansen, and you'll. This is extra thick. Right. CA glue, which is your cyanoacrylate. Yeah. This is the glue that you use for uh, building your resin kits. Right. And it, it will work to fill holes. Fill gaps. Uh, yeah. And then you cannot use your, you know, your classic Tamiya just for basic primer there. It, this is a plastic weld. It yeah. only works on styrene. Right. So you got to have some kind of super glue. So this stuff is really cool. You'll see this from different, it'll look the same, but it'll have yeah. a different, uh, like different you know, Bob yeah. Smith Industries. Yeah. There's another yeah. one. Yeah, I've so got that, some Bob Smith. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, this is the medium uh, gap filling glue. There's also Zappa Gap, yeah. and I bet you that a lot of model companies have like brand specific. Yeah. Here, here's one from FlexiFile that comes in a little app, pen applicator. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that's a. This one I think is quite thin. So they come in different thicknesses, and you can apply them in different ways. It's good to have a selection of thicknesses. You know, even even if you're not building resin. Yes. It's a good 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 thing because people use super glue, as you say, for gap filling and. Yeah, and you other can do things. different things with yeah. it, um, but for our resin kit project, uh -huh. we have to use super glue to get it together. And then what do you have there at the end? Now this is um, Instaset, uh -huh. and this is. Um, Accelerator, or sometimes people call it kicker, because what it yes. yeah, what it does is it like it speeds up the chemical reaction and makes the super glue dry super it's quick. Yeah, yeah, it sets right away. Not really drying. I think it no. sets because it just sets yeah. it. It sets it really hard right away. <laughs> so it comes in a spray bottle, but I've noticed that when you spray this, it really comes it out comes in a out huge everywhere. Puff. I was going to ask you because yeah, I, I have the same stuff. So what do you so what do you do a there? Little trick that I've and I've I find like you almost it can be wasteful right you yeah. blow through it quickly so, and it gets everywhere i yeah. have been using these small uh, micro brushes yeah i know those are available from flexi file flexi file has yeah. them in a, in like a bunch a, of different people yeah yeah you can find these around stage sizes and shapes yeah so i've actually come to either uh you know what great group i, I know i think i know stuff. what you're about to do here great minds yeah. think alike put it put some in there right yeah there you go and this stuff reeks, so... Yeah, it's got a very... To me, it's almost like a sweet, oily WD-40 smell. Yeah, I don't That's want it, I it in my lungs. No, I would probably want rock my no. fan for that yeah. portion, but when you... Now I've got some in there. I can just dip your brush, and it will actually... Uh, we'll do some right now. Uh, I'll get some glue here. I'm going to take some of this one. Um, <clears throat> if it comes really thick, I'm getting it down to the bottom of my... Uh oh, challenges. Keep trip your... to the hobby store. I guess is required. Oh, dear. <laughs> Here's a new one. We'll open it up. Yeah. Just also, when you're opening these, open them not facing away from you. Keep them clear of your eyes, kids. There you go. There's your safety tip. Yeah. There you go. 
Okay, so put yep. that back there. A nice blob of soup to hold in there. So I'm gonna just fill these up. These are actually fairly shallow. Okay, I'm gonna and just unzoom with it so I'll get people motion sickness. All right. I'm just gonna drop some yeah, in. Yeah, just drop some in and then move your hand. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, so you get the idea. So you just drop some in, yeah. So the nice thing about super glue too is that it's you can sand it down. So if, if I build it up, yeah, I can let it dry or I can I can accelerate it. And then I can still go back over with paper, uh, sanding stick, mm -hmm. or I, I'm going to use my sanding box because they work really well. And you've got a fairly flat surface there. Yeah. Well, and and that's what a lot of people do even on regular injected mold. Okay, so here's our, I'll just do it over here. Here's our accelerator. I'm just going to touch it around there because it, it tends to have like a wicking. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, got that really well. And that's it. Yeah, so I can let that sit. And this stuff evaporates, see? Yep. And then sometimes if you get another technique that comes in handy um, is if you have a deeper hole, mm -hmm. you can use the thin stuff, which mm -hmm. I don't have any. It's a blue. I know it's the blue label. Yep. And what you can do is you can layer some into the gap. Mm -hmm. Build it up. Yes. Build yep. it up in layers, yep. in thin layers, right? You would mm -hmm. accelerate it, let it dry out, mm -hmm. out for a minute or two, put another little dab in, dry it out. Because you don't want if if you have a very thick puddle or you know uh, like a little divot or a hole, and you you only accelerate the top, but it can still be gooey on the inside, uh -huh. and it may not have an opportunity to set. Yeah, I remember back before I really started using putties more and more. I this was my standard yeah. technique for filling like gaps and like fuselage halves. Yes, and, and yeah, the secret was to layer it, let it dry. If it's too deep, it, yeah. Your don't block, rush it. yeah, don't because rush there's it. a solvent. A lot of these things are solvent based, and, and the solvent well. has to off gas, yeah, right? Exactly. So you're kind of making a shell where it doesn't really want to. Yep. It doesn't want to. Um, but that's probably probably set now. Yeah. There you go. He, he so, has, his hands not stuck to it. No. Oh. And I know there's something. There's a little. Uh, might be very hard to see, but let me just see here. Like I might want to even add a little bit, yeah. a little touch more. There's like uh, a little. Kind of, I think where the stick came, yep. my applicator tool came out. All so right. I'll so just add a little touch, more. just so I don't have to sand it down and yep. say, oh, I have to add more. Although that, if that happens, that's just that's part the of the process. Of live video. Yeah. So these toothpicks are awesome. Mm -hmm. They've been a great. They've been well, a really well, cool tool. We should also say we've already got some very good compliments on our first two parts of the series. We Excellent. really appreciate that from our, yeah, I hope people our get Patreon something. supporters. I hope something, people get something out of it. Yeah, and, and well, I, get, again, myself, I've learned a heck of a lot. Yeah, they get motivated to uh, get out your kit. Yeah, so we'll let that- give resin a try. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've got a resin, you know, you bought one, with high hopes and then maybe you, you thought, like, oh, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. So here's something interesting too. That now okay. they, they, they've they molded a the trigger and the handle of the gun pod in, mm -hmm. into the fist. Okay. So it's, it's not bad. It's pretty, it's yeah. pretty nicely detailed mm -hmm. for a robot hand. And then um, it had some mold lines that I just clean. I just took my knife. Um, just gently. Clean, you know, yeah, yeah. Cl clean them off. It's nothing it's that light, it's always a light touch. Yeah, better a light touch yeah. than a heavy touch. And it's not unlike the techniques you're already using on your plastic kits. Yeah. But what they did was they've added pins, right? And I noticed though it didn't fit. There was it sort of went in like that. There was a oh, gap. Right. A little bit of a gap. So yeah. I just took my drill bits and and just the way you want. opened it up. Open. I think I deepened the holes a yep. little bit, and then I can glue that it's together quite nicely. Yeah, and that's actually got a pretty decent hold. Yeah. So that brings us to our next little topic of um, adding pins. Okay. Right. So this is a this is very light. Right. You've got this small piece, mm -hmm. this small piece. They weigh nothing. And they they provided these like you know they're just little resin plugs right that right. I'm gonna glue that in there it's gonna be just fine I'm not gonna be worried about it right but um I'll let that dry for a second and then uh, and then uh, we'll sand it down uh -huh. but um, the next sort of uh, important topic to discuss is when you get bigger pieces of resin right you need to pin them. Okay. Right. So it's what you're talking. What we're talking about is. Oh, I should have had some better examples of that. Is when you have two pieces that have. There's not going to be a lot of pinning on this. No. I don't think. It's I think so a good fine. example would be. Let's say you're making a, a resin figure. Yeah. And you need to connect the arm to the shoulder. 
Or the head to the torso. Or the head to the thing where you yeah. have to pin it. And pinning something I know led miniature builders. Absolutely. And have done it. So it's, yeah. a, it's not a foreign technique, but no. it's something some people may have not encountered. It, it's one of those, yeah, I, I think even even connecting a figure to a base, you need to pin it, right? Yeah, just like a good secure hold. So super glue uh, has strength. But it doesn't have good sheer strength. It's not. It doesn't have any give. Yeah. It's, it can be it's, very brittle if, if it's, off and off. It's axis. inflexible. But so if I were to, if these were two model pieces and you glue them like this, mm -hmm. or let's say like that, right? Right. It can easily break that yeah, way. They have sheer. very low sheer strength, right? Mm -hmm. But they have really good like stick strength, sort right. of dead on. So that's where you add your pins. And all I have to do is use your drill bits or your micro mm -hmm. drill bits, mm -hmm. drill holes. You can use brass rod. Mm -hmm. You can even use two corresponding pieces so one fits into the other. Right. Right, which is, which is always easy. But it could just be a hole that you've drilled out that's of the mm -hmm. appropriate size. And then when you mount it, you add your glue kind of around that and it gives it that strength. So you your brass rod to length. Yeah. Away you go. Yeah, yeah. And you just use like little nubs yeah, like this, exactly. right? Yeah. So this small piece could be a good yeah, pin and that. That, that's definitely something I've used on tons of polystyrene mm -hmm. kits just to right. shore up something yeah. to give it a bit of strength um, wheels you'll be surprised how much that yeah. makes a difference exactly absolutely yeah wheels particularly on, on the larger on the lar like larger landing gear wheels absolutely I'll, I'll do that with, yeah. yeah exactly so that's something is worth considering for a lot of uh, a lot of parts. This okay. is sort of a different beast because it comes with its own joints. Mm -hmm. But um, so here's an interesting. This is actually the first part I started out with. Okay. So this would be the this is the the front nose landing gear bay. Right. I'm just zooming in there. So it actually sits fits like this. Mm -hmm. And um, this has some of the most delicate resin. If I, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, oh, but we'll it's pictures. it's so thin, it's yeah. transparent right wow. there, right? Okay, isn't that crazy? Yeah. And this had quite a few surface in inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Like it was kind of a peel, like a look like an orange peel kind of skin right. on it. Um, the doors were. So this, like, this is a '90s design, like inspired by aircraft of the time. So that's uh -huh. you get a lot of these hex. I don't know what you call that shape, but yeah. So these were these were all kind of bumpy and lumpy, and they just weren't crisp and sharp. So I spent a little bit of time. Again, I really use the sanding blocks in here. Um, probably the green one here. I went in and just cleaned up each edge and squared them off. Right. And it just gives such a nicer look, mm -hmm. uh, a little more finer. Um, let's see if one, one of the other ones that's unfinished. Here's, so here's the rear, here's the rear band. This is actually right. a good, uh, a good example. Just zoom in there, keep it still. There you go, okay. So right away I can see a couple pinholes. Yep. So like right there, there's just a little, so that would have been an air bubble trapped in the uh -huh. resin as they were, had uh -huh. nowhere to go. And then this, this piece is not too, too bad, but um, yeah, I'll probably even still go over this. Just right. each, just go over each surface. Uh -huh. So it's very flat and there's no little artifacts right. left in it. So um, yeah, I spent some time cleaning that up. And this kit actually came, has all these, um, I believe they were provided. They were, little like a rod I, i'm not even sure what kind of plastic it is it's it's not resin i don't think right but there are pins okay that would connect the joints so they could still swivel and move oh okay so you can see one here mm -hmm. right one for each door and they're kind of a clear color Right. And then there's one right here because this all folds down for the robot form, oh, right? And so it, now the engineering behind it. Yeah. Just. So then this be, this would be the bottom of the airplane, right? right with the the front right. landing gear, and then the nose comes out from there. Yes. And then when it transforms, it's yeah, uh, folds up. It folds up, and I think the chest is sitting here. The cockpit okay. sitting in here, and okay. this is sort of like the groin, and Very then the feet cool. would come down. Right. So I just spent some time on that and like these surfaces I made them flat and uh, like even them out very easy you can see here this this joint piece has like mm -hmm. a big sort of a seam line going through it I right. didn't worry about that because it's gonna be hidden no matter what form you're mm -hmm. viewing the finished model in but this part um, had been glued originally you can kind of see a bit of glue residue there right right so um, 
and we'll look at the main fuselage here. So that part, I think, uh, is connects like this. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to I've got to clean a bit of that stuff off. Right. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to uh, mount this piece with a magnet. Ah, like a rare earth magnet. Yes, and I have. So here's even some model um, model this. parts. So this is. I'm just um, going to zoom into it here. Sure. So this is high Q, high Q parts. All right, and these guys out of Japan, I assume. Yes, and um, so here we have these are five millimeter by two millimeter oh, magnets. Holy cow, that's tiny. Yeah, well, I thought these would be this would be a great size. Yeah. So there's not a lot of uh, information I can tell you about this, seeing as I can only read one of or two of these characters. Well, well the good thing is we have Google Translators. So yeah. Oh, just yeah. Turn the phone over. <laughs> but that's, that's amazing. Just keep that up there. Those are amazing. Isn't that cool? Those are like... Yeah, this would have been a couple bucks on Hobbyland Japan. Right. And I'm sure you could find this at many other shops. I know Scott, uh, shops. Scott at Hobbyland Japan. He yeah. carries a lot of stuff. We had a great interview with him a while back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Panda Hobby. I didn't realize they made them that small. Yeah, and and like I always find the smaller the better. So what I'm what my plan is to do there, we'll mm -hmm. see how it works out. Is so this thing is quite quite fragile, quite yeah. delicate. But um, I'm going to so we've got a little bit of depth below the 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 gear bay door. Mm -hmm. Let me just gently open that up, and so I feel that I can probably use a drill bit to cut a little bit of a depth right you know just enough hopefully i can work one of those in and i'm going to glue it in there another glue i like to use uh, should be hopefully it's uh familiar with modelers is five minute epoxy yes five minute epoxy has the strength that um, super glue doesn't right okay. so it's if you need to glue something and never <laughs> never is going to come undone you're not going to do it without destroying it yeah and take it apart this yes. is the great stuff so this type of glue you this is what i'm going to use to mount the magnet just because okay. i don't want it to slip right. so and i like i like the jb weld brand i get this at home depot it's 10 or 12 bucks your local hardware store but it's just a five minute epoxy and there's many brands, right? So I'll squirt out a little bit and what this, the plunger will push out a little, a little bit, bit of each. each and then you mix, mix it, it really. The trick with this glue is to mix it thoroughly. Like okay. to, when you think you're done, keep going. But then you, the idea is that you only have five minutes before right. the hardener and the, the resin set. And the instructions, whatever you yeah. use, will be fairly clear about how much working time. Yeah, you have. read the instructions, right? You yeah. always learn something new. RTFM as we say, read the effing manual. All right, good advice. That's right. So um, I, I will use that a lot for all kinds of stuff. Just when you you've got something that needs a little bit of strength to it. Right. So I'm going to mount that magnet, and then about the other side. I don't know if it's going to be another magnet or um, just a little metal plate or something. Yeah, exactly, a little metal scrap. I'm going to have to see what kind of works out because cool. that piece has to fit on here, and I th I believe that. I'm not 100% sure yet. It'll become apparent, but oh, now you can sort of see the plane yep. starting to form, that. right? So here'd be the cockpit, the nose, yep. the canards, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh goodness, close call. Close call. <laughs> You're live. Oh, it's all right. So um, I'm not sure if this was meant to be. I think it was meant to be glued on, but then I don't know how it would transform. Yeah. So, so I wonder if it's going to be a way. Yeah. Maybe there's a rod that has to go through or something. Again, something, something, something you'll have a nice chop. But I'm going to, I'm going to mount that with a magnet, and I think I'll have a spot to put the appropriate, or maybe over here in this section, right. to, uh, and this, this part holds the ball joints that mm -hmm. secure the legs yes. and like the wing assembly to the actual model. Right. So I actually, I think it'd be beneficial to be able to take it apart to do the transformation. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of the anime magic, right? Where uh, exactly the, the, the ship would the ship would transform, and all the parts would be there. Everything Nothing comes work. apart, Nothing right? Comes yeah, apart. it all just sort of does it mechanically <laughs> while it's flying through the air. Yeah. But the, sometimes you can't achieve that same thing in practicality, right? So I might it might how, we'll see how it works out. But anyway, I did want to point out about um, cleaning off the surfaces, and if you notice the, these these pins here mm -hmm. so i actually sanded them flush to the surface in jet mode mm -hmm. so when i when you move it to the position for the robot 
I think it's something like that. Yeah. You'll notice that it's now a, it sticks out a little yeah. tiny bit, yeah. but you got to pick something. And gotta, I, yeah, yeah. I always oh, yeah. favor the fighter mode. There the fighters go. are the coolest. That's right. So, but it was kind of all they they had a they had a jagged edge, mm -hmm. and I've been pulling out the pins and then cutting them very flush. Mm -hmm and cleaning them off a little bit. Let me show you an example of a pin that has not been dealt with yet. So if you look here, I, I wonder if they just provided you a piece of rod and then you had to cut your own cut to, to length, length, right? Yeah, maybe. So here's a kind of a, just a rough cut. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was nippered. Right. Like I can see it was maybe cut with a pair of nippers and then you can see another yeah. one there. Yeah, and size didn't have Yeah. Right. So then they weren't quite flush. So I'm, I'm just going to take the time. Look at the flash here, right? Like yeah, along here. Yeah, a little bit there, yeah. Some, a big chunk of something there. Yep. So, yeah, again, taking that time and just flattening all the flat surfaces, cleaning up the edges, uh, and then taking, I have been using just pieces of paper um, that are flexible, it's just sandpaper, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And taking that wet sanding and high high grit, like a 600, right. and going over just the actual surface yeah. to make it smooth like you'd expect a polystyrene kit. And, okay. uh Because really, this is a 1 to 100 scale airplane. Yep. The skin would be, would appear very, uh, smooth right mm -hmm. at that scale so I don't want any rough stuff right I want it to be uh, okay be nice but perfect yeah so here's another this is the shield and again it had uh, just poor stub edges I cleaned out and you can see there's a little hole that needs to be mm -hmm. filled in and I went along the edges just tried to square them up and then I had this was a this piece is a glued on piece by the way this is colored this is like tinted resin. Right. It has not been painted. I think and we were you, wondering you about that. that. Yeah. I think you mentioned it in the first So, part. yeah, you can make resin any color, and I think they try to dye it to match the design. So um, I just yeah went in here, added a bit of putty, took my block and uh, at a high grit, I think maybe use 400, and kind of smoothed it out so there's mm -hmm. no bumps on the edges. Right. And then, uh, yeah, that's the finished shield. So those are some, oh, let's go back to this. Let's see if we can get this. That's nice and dry. I'm gonna just take my 320. Mm -hmm. Put a bit of water on it. Yeah. We'll just see if we can get rid of those holes. So I think the better the model, um, you know, better the maker, mm -hmm. the less pinholes you're gonna see. Right. But I think, that is going to be a common experience in the, mm -hmm. you know, you are going to find bubbles, air bubbles and pinholes, and it's sort of unavoidable, even in the best resin caster. Right. So it's something you just need to know how to, to deal with. And it's not that big a deal. No. But that's not something you're going to find on the, you know. Well, I remember when we were talking with John Moscato. Yeah. He described sometimes some of the challenges of, yeah. of doing that. All right. This is just about done. So this is my 320, and I'll probably want to, take it up to 400 right. to really smooth it out. But have a look there. Okay, just keep this still for a second and we'll see how much we can zoom in. But again, we're gonna do before and after. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can see it even here, but we'll do an after picture too. Sure. Looks good. Yeah, so there's, there's okay. uh, that's your cleanup process, right? And it, I gotta say, I've, been, I've spent a few hours on this already and it doesn't really seem like I've done much, but it's one of those things, it's all the small details that add up and probably you can apply that to any project you're well, doing with models. Exactly, right? and you say time <clears throat> flies, like we're almost yeah. 40 minutes into the video. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, time flies. Get and your money nice, out of this yeah. one. So let's talk a little bit about some other stuff that's mm -hmm. that, that can come up. Um, yeah, that's the basic process. If there's any questions, shoot us a question on uh, scalemodelpodcast.com, on Facebook, even on Goodman Models, yeah. and, and we'll, we'll try and do uh, more detail. But So you get these kits, right? And I got to say, I, I am very choosy. I do not own many resin kits because I think that it's really easy to get into something that's just too much mm -hmm. hassle. Right. And you have uh, to enjoy it. Like we have yeah. we have some friends in the club that, you know, Mike loves vacuform. He loves to torture himself with vacuform. Tor it's, he torture himself. See, we all think torture, but he loves it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what you like and what you want so to do. So I have um I do I have a bunch of kits that I, I think have been really well mastered mm -hmm. and then really well cast. 
and and they look pretty. They're almost as good as what comes out of a, a polystyrene right. kit. But they're of subjects that can't be had any other way. Any other way. So why don't what we yeah. do is we'll take a quick break. Okay. We'll move those onto the bench. Yes. And then we'll show them. So here yeah. we go. All right, so uh, I, I wanted to show an example of some really fine resin casting work. That's pretty big chunks of resin. Yes, right? they are. These are... Uh, and to comparison. Yeah. Yes, these are huge, right? So this is part of the atmos atmospheric booster kit uh, from from Moscato Hobby from Models. Moscato, yeah. And I believe he said this was his first resin kit that he put out. Holy cow. And uh, I noticed that this part here actually has a little... Uh, Inscription in it. Does it? John F. Moscato, two thousand and four. He's got a. He's got yeah. to make sure he's around. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. That's awesome. But I love this, right? So the uh, another, another Macross kit. Yeah. Because they can't have too many I of those. A trend. I yes. Trend. Hmm. But so the this was like the the Valkyries were slotted in, and it they could launch off the Earth and atmosphere and make it into the, the yeah. Go into orbit. Yeah. These are just two pieces of it. There's obviously some other stuff to it, mm -hmm. but um, I think this is a really excellently uh, molded kit. And but just looking, just looking at it, right? It's not. It's it's a different beast compared to a polystyrene kit. So you see here, like these these are the pore stubs, right? That all has to cut, chop off, and then okay. this fin is like just as you, as you imagine, right? Mm -hmm. So like this whole part has to come off, and then you look at it here, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of a corner there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna turn this around because yep. it gets quite interesting. So I can see that there's air bubbles on this surface, right? And then this part obviously was look where the the stuff gooed out of the mm -hmm. mold, right? And you're saying before it happens. It's it's part of it. It's part unavoidable. It, yeah. So you got to be. So what what's going to happen there is I'm probably gonna I'm gonna clean all this stuff out of here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to tr prick those. I'm gonna prick those bubbles. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and pray that oh they don't come to the surface. I'm actually gonna prick them to make sure. and, and fill them. And fill right? Them right. I can see. I don't know if actually. I think this is the bottom. I'm not sure how the Valkyrie. Oh yeah, the Valkyrie's legs, like the boosters, fit right in here. Right. right. So it might be covered. Well, then it's obviously not an issue, right? If it's something uh, you can't see. But, but you it, would know. Yeah. If if it's exposed, I'm gonna. Right. I'm, I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna prick those surfaces and then just do fill them in and, okay. and sand them down, right? That's mm -hmm. just how they deal with it. And then, um, <clears throat> so it's not that it's you know mysteriously hard. I think it's just a matter of people are not used to it. There's a bit more. There's a bit more prep work and cleanup. You yeah, have to do. yeah. You spend a bit more time on that. But right. If you are after that rare subject, this is your way of getting it, and it's mm -hmm. it's not undoable. So, here's another section where I think um, a little bit of like crust. Mm -hmm. And here's a sort of a chunk and I can see there's even a little piece missing So right. I'm gonna clean it off the best I can and then I might use the super glue trick or or even even uh, Tommy a putty mm -hmm. Or whatever right whatever putty to put in there should I think would work just fine and uh, But overall, I mean this has like beautiful um, Rivet marks in it yeah. and these sort of panel details and if you look inside here, that's gorgeous yeah, there's these sort of ribs and like there's little um, like hex nuts and then this is where the boosters fit. There's big giant uh, thruster bells that sit in mm -hmm. here. But that's a really great, this is, you know, an amazing opportunity to build this kit. It was one of these like rare, shows up very briefly in episodes, kind of like a throwaway design almost. Yeah, right. And it would never see the light of day in a kit form other than this right so you know i'm very uh, i feel very fortunate to have this yeah. and here's a, so here's the other half you see the different tones too and yeah i uh, noticed that yeah i wonder if they're from different batches so uh, different like well it would be different i don't different know i'm not sure if it's batches. aging like i've had it for 10 years oh but it lets you if you've had it in a box though yeah i've had it in a box so i don't know i'm not too worried about it mm -hmm. oh, hopefully it doesn't uh impact well, the, when you paint it so here's something interesting. Yeah. This is um, flash. Yes. Right. This is like a yeah. grill. Like here's a Just weird move it bubble. A bit over to the right. So we. Nope. Nope. Sorry. Um, we're, we're, yep. There you go. Now I can. There see you go. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it there. And, and, and probably most people have seen that on a plastic yeah. model kit, right? So you just got to get in there and just be very careful and start trimming it. And yeah. there's like a weird bubble of like a resin that gooed out, you know. So that's just part of the cleanup. And again, here this has its own tabs, right? 
so this would have to be cut off that way right. very carefully. And what I would do is I would I would do them gradually with my blocks, starting with like an 80, 80 grit, right. which is um, the 80 grit, which is the coarsest grit in my set, mm -hmm. was really intended for building resin kits, right? So right. I'll do some right now. There you go. Um, just because it's cause that's a big chunk, right? I I've get also heard of some people, I know some of the people who just 3D print will never get their little rotary tool, but that uh, you have to be so careful. See, there, I mean, it, powered tools are awesome, yeah, but sometimes but, too much power yeah, is exactly. no good. That's the only thing. I'd rather take yeah. my time. Yeah, I'd rather control control with a hand yeah. tool yeah. and have that control and just it's when you just work your way through the grits. Like I'm going to start at 80. Fine. I get close. I'm going to start moving to 180 and right. 220 right. until I'm just polishing it flush. Perfect. So when I put it together, it's going to be great, right? Mm -hmm. But I'd rather just do it slowly, right? So just to see um, another sample, and uh, that brings me to another. Um, uh, issue that often we see in parts, and I actually don't have any warped parts, but that's because that's, that's because yeah. you buy good quality. Yeah, Res I've I've been Your very picky. Not. I've been, I am. It's Your true. Not. I'll admit it. I'll come clean. That's all right. There you go. That's all right. Uh, I'll send it back. Just like I'll send it back, baby. Just like we have friends that say Photo Etch is your friends. You know. Yeah. Anthony is a resin snob. Photo Etch is your friend. Apparently. But um, so again, uh, the way that most resin kits are built is there's some kind of like stiff board mm -hmm. with your rubber molds in between, and then they're like you know maybe elastic bands or something, so it's easy to get them kind of squished, right? Right. You might have a bit of an angle this way or that way, or mm -hmm. a sandwich mm -hmm. or something, and then you end up with a part that is warped, and that can be a big problem, right? So one of the methods. I don't have any good warped parts to show no. you, but one of the methods, for example, uh, oh, another Macross part. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, my goodness. Imagine that. If this was a bit of a banana shape, okay, um, you could put it into warm or like fairly hot water, mm -hmm. let it kind of warm up a bit, and you can try and bend it into shape. Very similar technique with injected molded. Yeah. People have come across this before and then put it in the cold water so it'll hold its shape. Or yeah. vinyl kits. I think yeah. that's a big issue with vinyl I've, stuff. I've built some really old stuff over the yeah. years, and sometimes you've had to. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, again, um, here's another piece that's that actually has some, some pinholes. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm just poking them out a bit, but so yeah, you can just sort of see that they're they're they're, they're there, right? And um, you know, if this is part of your finished kit, the best way is to kind of open them up and, and then properly, and then fill them. Because the last thing you want yeah. is, is the bubble burst when you're in the middle of painting or priming. Or yeah, they, it's if it's just a right. thin skin, it's yeah. going to be a, it, it will be an issue, especially if you're yeah. sanding something smooth. Or I think mm -hmm. there were some on this. Now what scale are these boosters? One to one hundred. No, this is seventy second this scale. Seventy second, okay. Yeah. So pretty big when you compare that to a yeah. seventy second scale like tank or aircraft. Oh, it's huge, eh? Yeah, yeah. They are. It's, it's going to be a really nice build up. Yeah. So, do you have any plans long term? What what uh, what mech you're going to put them with? I'm going to do well. It only fits like a VF one A. Only fits the VF one A. Yeah, uh, Val or whatever a VF one Valkyrie. Okay. It's like the first generation. The first generation. One so I'll have to do some kind of fun paint scheme. Oh, that'll be fun. With and then uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Awesome. And, um, so another problem, like basically, uh, we we're talking about bubbles. We mm -hmm. talked about layering the glue. Yeah. So I kind of think the pinholes are a bit smaller. Bubbles are a, a bigger issue, mm -hmm. and you're going to find those. And I've then heard that. Yes. Another trick. Uh, with the layering for the like a bigger bubble issue is you can mix up um, baking baking powder and super glue. Oopsie! Oh, to, I, oh no, that's a good thing, right? To make to make like a Mural filling glue, yes. paste. And that's why I know people have done. Yes. That. Some yeah. people also have used talcum powder, believe it or not. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Is it? It is baking powder, right? Baking powder. Talcum powder is a very fine version. It's much finer grit. Yeah. I've heard of people using both. Yes. Yeah, back in the back in the good old days, back before we had all these different fillers and that. Yeah. That was the standard. Yeah. Like probably okay. getting back to the seventies and eighties, like the sort of uh, um, techniques of the back where we had to do it in the good old days. The early masters. So back when we were young and stupid. Yeah. If <laughs> if you're getting to 
um, a bigger sinkhole or bubble, mm. I would maybe it's time to not just. You, I mean, you can do the super glue. I think well, it would work, it. especially if you layer it. But you can make your own gap filler. Yeah. There's also I, I don't have it, but I'd like to try that Zappa Gap. I've heard very good things about it. Yeah, and it's been around for a long it's time. It's been around for a long I'll have time. Have to try that. Now, let me ask you. Now, here's an interesting question. Um, out of the blue. So, in injection molded, I, I don't know if you've heard of this, but if you have your Tamiya Extra Thin, what some people do is when they get almost down to there's hardly any, any glue left, so like just, just get out your bottle of Tamiya Oh, I know what you're thin, talking about. And yeah. then what they'll do is they'll cut up some sprues. Yes. And the sprue goo. The sprue, sprue goo. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And because what happens is you put the sprue and it eventually dissolves. And people will use that as a gap, as a gap filler. Um, can you get away with that, you know, in the resin world? I... Something that would work? No, or? I don't no? think so. Okay, just again, it'd be an interesting question because I've used the sprue. Goo. Have you? I have, and it's, it's it, for certain situations. It will work. It works very well. Actually. I was under the impression that it won't work because it'll never set. I've no problem with that. I've used it to usually, usually for very shallow, but maybe slightly wider, and then I'll put it on. Okay. And then I now I do let it dry for a couple of days. Yeah. And then it's it sands down nicely. It's probably not as it's certainly it certainly won't be as hard as let's say baking soda. And yeah. super glue. So but I'm worried it's not gonna it's not gonna it, dry hard enough. Have, it's not gonna set. It's, it's it sets for me. I always give it a couple of days, but it certainly it sands easier. So to me, I think it's a bit softer. Oh, but it does interesting. Work. It does work. Again, it's another it's another tool in the tool chest. I've actually I've I've um, decided not to try that out based on. Paul Budzig's advice. It's where different. Talked yeah. About yeah. It I know. Not, different it'll people. never fully I've used set. It. Now. But these days, I tend to use a acrylic-based putty, um, yeah. the perfect putty, and I pretty well use that for everything now because for me yeah. it just works. Well, but there over you go. the years, I've used different things. Yeah. So you're moving up in the world, well, Stu. I guess. So yeah, this stuff. Um, there is no equivalent of that, I think, because the way resin works is it's like you have a you have a hardener and then the resin itself. It's like a two-part mm, material. And once it's hard, and it's a chemical go back. It's a chemical reaction. Right. So um, what you're essentially doing with your your leftover Tamiya is that you are melting some plastic in and then letting it letting the solvent dry out of it and hopefully mm. cure. Right. And you yeah, said you've it had cures. it work. Yeah, it has it work. So definitely. this is once the chemical reaction occurs mm -hmm. it just forms that material and that's right. it okay what's so. interesting is that um you know it, when you when you actually do it it, it gets hot it releases it generates oh, heat yeah it gets super hot so you can warm your <laughs> yeah warm your hands warm, warm you your burn hands your skin by your model kit yeah so um here's another example of just how amazing this kit was mm -hmm. like you gotta look at the trailing edge on this yeah so just hold it still and i'll see how close i can get it's razor yeah, sharp know, i'm looking at that yeah don't for god's sakes don't cut yourself yeah, good paper cut. He was he, he when I came in. He was actually using it to slice a piece of roast beef. I was shaving with beef. it. He was shaving with <laughs> it. Too, yeah. yeah, he's he's going to use it for the Christmas. Yeah. Party. So here's another example of like a molding defect mm -hmm. that just is inherent in the process of uh, model making is that if you can see here, there's sort of, uh, I think that's just meant to be like a panel and a line. Right. This, so this would be the intake, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of under, under wing, it's a delta wing plane. Yep. And then you look down here and you've got this sort Where of like take, yeah. swoop, right? Yep. And that's just uh, something in the, maybe a, a seam, but it's kind of a deformity, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, it's just something. It needs to be worked away at very carefully, very mm -hmm. slowly, and and you always work your way up. Right. So, um, and what I mean by that, like for example, when I'm sanding something, and I showed you the example with the uh, the plug uh, portion on the the boosters, mm -hmm. I would start with the eighty. And as I get closer to where I want more control and I don't want to go over too much, I go lighter and lighter and lighter. And, and uh, I think this is the same idea, but the opposite. So I would, if I had to clean up something or work on this, I, I'd maybe start, um, I'd start a little bit finer right? and then see how that goes. And if I, okay. if it's going too slowly, I could, all oh, right, I will go to 220. Mm -hmm. well, maybe I'll start at 320 here. If it's not happening quick enough, and I feel like I have the control. Okay, I can move it with 220 and work away at that. Awesome. Um, but it's better to 
right? Take it's, your time. It's a light, it's a light touch. Light better, touch. Better, better it takes you yeah. know, several attempts than try and overdo it because you can always yeah. you can always sand a bit away, but you can't put it back. Well, it's it's so much harder to fill material and replace material than it is to yeah. to to remove it, right? So Perfect. take your time, and then it, okay. it'll all work out. So one of the other issues. Oh, bad casts. All bad right, casts. bad casts. Okay. So. I, I wrote down in my little notes there, you got to know when to fold them. Mm. And if you get a kit that is greasy or has like soft resin on it, it's unbuildable. If you have a kit that's like in totally covered in flash, do you want to spend five years cleaning flash off of yeah. every surface? Yeah. This, this to me, um, those deformities I'm showing you, they're kind of everywhere, right? Like uh -huh. there's some things here, there's, um, you know, some edges down here that need to be cleaned up that's not really all that bad no, it's not. for a resin kit you know this thing here uh when i get into that there's like some gooeyness here that uh -huh. not goo but like extra material has to be yep. removed those, those plugs there's yep. like these little lumps there and i'm gonna have to maybe clean this edge when i want to mm -hmm. get you know, you flush with the other one, yeah. to, to mate them. Those are normal things to expect with a, a good resin kit. Right. So do not be off put by those things. These are really well done. Like the little bit of flash. Yep. Like I, th I think if you saw that on a Tamiya kit, you go, well, who was working in the factory yeah, that exactly. day? It makes no sense. But if you see it on Airfix, an old Airfix or a frog, you go, big deal. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but for resin kit, that's kind that's of par for the course. Mm -hmm. And I think, but you get kits sometimes that are so, there's so many issues. It's just, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be a nightmare. And I say, get rid of it. It's not worth it. Pick something fun, you okay. know, pick something else. So right. that's just my personal take on it. Um, now, sometimes you get into missing parts. Missing parts. So you will get a kit from a garage maker. It's a one person show. They miss a part. And you think, okay, that's not a big deal. I'll just call them and they'll give me a new one. And a lot of times they will. Like I know Brett Trainer from Return to Kit Form, and he's, you know, like there's a kit with a hundred pieces and one gets missed. He's gonna he's gonna email it out to you. You're gonna be happy. Uh, sometimes you have a kit from 20 years ago and that person doesn't do it anymore and the company's no longer around. You got to fabricate a piece. Right. So um, I'm not going to show that stuff uh, practically here because this kit has everything, but you can recast your own pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple interesting methods that I think are easy and accessible. One is to try the blue stuff okay. produced by Green Stuff World where you yep. can make easy... Uh, copies of small parts and like we're gonna have a wheels. To yes, we're gonna have a there's a great video on YouTube where they show you the process I know I think like um, I think they kind of intended it for making like minis like one piece yeah. army builders, yeah. right? Exactly. And uh, they can just make a copy of your favorite figure or like a truck tire or something like yeah. that in 35th scale um, Also in Shet Payne's book the classic modeling tanks and military vehicles on page 35 He talks about the old-school buying your t little set of resin and hardener mm -hmm. making a mold he shows you that little process with pictures and you can you can simply make that's how a lot of people got started yeah and that was a book from the, i think maybe the late 70s, 70s or 70s. yeah um so those are two good resources to check out we'll definitely post those um also you might have to get into building um like scratch build parts right mm -hmm. so then you're just gonna really have a look at your selection of evergreen parts right. your evergreen sheet stock and again you're just measuring you're using your sanding blocks or your mm -hmm. other tools and, and making pieces and you're going to be gluing them with super glue right so even though the um the, the, the sheet stock is styrene you're mm -hmm. still mating it to a dissimilar surface. It's got to be, um, it's got to be super glue, or or the epoxy glue in in, right. in certain instances. So, um, is there anything else we should talk about? I think you're pretty well part at the three. End of it. We have a, we had an awesome part there. Yeah, so I think that's good. Now, what are we? Maybe just touch upon what are we going to cover in part four? I'm going to put that's you on great. the spot. That's there. a great question. Part four is. 
we're going to get into cleaning cleaning the parts cleaning the in parts, more which detail. I, which I preempted you on. Yeah, I but forgot that we were going to cover that's that. Okay. So that's okay. We're going to talk about right. that in, in detail, and I'll have this done. Mm -hmm. And we're actually, we are going to wash it up and get ready for uh, priming. Perfect. And, uh, Perfect. Yeah. So as I said, we're going to take some pictures as well mm -hmm. um, once we're done recording this. So we'll see some pictures oh. to go with the email. Sorry. Oh, Stu, one more thing. We did forget about something. One more thing. In regards to scratch building or yes. replacing parts. Yes. We did. Uh, we got? I'm going to move these back into their special box. As Steve Jobs used to say, one more thing. One more thing. So this is a selection of um, ball joints and other different um, connecting pieces. And I, I assume uh, you probably got this from our good friends at Hobby Ventures. I absolutely did. Actually, I bought some of the stuff in Japan, too. Oh, there you go. When I was uh, so on my, uh, my, my Mecca. Yep, yeah, that's good. I'm just zooming into show people so you get all sorts of ball joints yeah and so these are these are sets of ball joints by kotobukiya mm -hmm. they're um they have an msg line which is modeling support goods so these are like a couple bucks and basically they have all different diameters of like ball joints and sockets right so yep. yeah you can see right away how if you're building mecca and you just want to change it up you can use this but i'm actually i think that there's a damaged ball joint and it may have to replace. So this would be like the the leg, how it connects. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. gonna have to rebuild something. But here's a here's a here's like a double joint. All right. Let's keep that still. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have to encounter any of those in my very first gun to my belt. So yeah. A double joint. These are. Uh, this is another. That's Kotobukiya. Right, this is that? another one um, by Hobby Base. These are really great. They're like a different type of plastic, and they're really yeah. rigid. Okay. So more um, and, plastic. But that that is just a set of really tiny. Yeah, let me take it out. Tiny ball joints. Like they're really. Uh, Okay, let's keep it still for a second. Look at the size. It's just. They nuts. are really tiny. Yeah, but that's almost what you need. reminds me of uh, headlamps. It, it it does look like that, but they're ball. This is a ball joint. Yeah. Here's so wave. Um, wave is they've done an amazing range of. Uh, it's called the option system. Okay. So they have their own ball joints, and um, usually it's, they have a lot of detail parts. But mm -hmm. they have like this is a set of hinges. So you have like a rod and a hinge. Right. So if like an up like a in and out motion kind of thing. Cool. And then here's another hobby base with longer. These are again slightly longer joints. Yeah, but now you have a, like a, a double ball oh, joint. Right. So you have one hinge on one, or one. Uh, so one could be like a yeah. to a leg or a yeah yeah a universal a joint, right? Yeah, and two of them stuck together. Right. So you can see how these would really come in handy mm -hmm. if if something breaks. I'll be able to kind of deal with yeah, it, right? With it. Or in, in for other projects that you're doing, if you want to modify something, or especially older kits, like the Gundam mm -hmm. you built is an older kit right. with less engineered right, sorry, yeah. um, sort of uh, mechanical joints and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you can make your own, right? You and the, your own, yeah, yeah cool. these have been around for a long time. And these are, again, like, I think two bucks or something like that. Yeah, three, four bucks, maybe, and again, I'd say. Again, we know our friends at Hobby Link Japan will have them. Absolutely, and you can get these probably in a lot of uh, Rainbow Ten, Hobby Link Japan. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, e yeah. even a local Gundam store. I, th you know what? I think Neo even Neo Tokyo Neo in London Tokyo has a couple Ontario, of these. Yeah. yeah, one of our local uh, anime stores. Yeah. Okay. So that was yeah, using the ball joints and and generic parts to kind of you know bring your creation to life or to mm -hmm. or or to you know in this case make Perfect. make joints new again. But yes, that's what I meant to say. So that's awesome. So that's almost an hour of uh, wow. I think this is Gundam the content. This is the longest. There's no Gundam in this though. No, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> See, I'm just as bad. I'm still learning. What should I? What What's, what's, what's uh, the correct word? Gunpla. Gunpla? Gunpla. Gunpla means Gundam Puras. Or mechs. So what, what should yeah. we call it? It's just a mecha. Just a mecha. It's science fiction modeling. Science fiction modeling. Oh, it's really modeling. at its core. There you go. Gunpla was actually a term kind of meant for, it's a portmanteau of Gundam and plastic. Oh, right? Okay. So it's short right. for Gundam, Gundam plastic, plastic, but they would pronounce it uh, Gunpura. All right. Instead and of, of course, plaw, because in North it, America slaughter it by going gunpla. Well, it's been it's been yeah, kind of well. The the L and the R sound is kind of merged in the Japanese right. uh, okay. soundscape. Okay. So they they what they're doing is taking the English word for mm -hmm. the Gundam and plastic, and then mm -hmm. but the way it comes out in their common speech is uh, like instead of pla, it's pura. Oh, okay, I'm with you. Right, so it's gunpura. 
or gumpla, which is what it's supposed to be because mm-hmm. they're you're using in English terms anyways. But there you go. But this is just right. science fiction stuff. So perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we're all done for this time. So for the Scale Model Podcast, I'm Stuart Clark. And I'm Anthony Goodman. Thank you, and be well.